Honorable Deputy Chairman of Committees. <clears throat> now, first of all, let me uh, uh, thank uh, the Speaker and also the President and Prime Minister uh, to have acceded to my request to put off all the rest of the business of the day and uh, have this adjournment debate in order to at least uh, give that relief to the beleaguered, affected uh, people, uh, both in Kandy and Ampara districts, particularly, and all the other others all over the country, uh, those who wish uh, fair coexistence among all communities. Uh, with those comments, uh, Mr. Speaker, I must make one thing very clear. Honorable <coughs> Uh, Dinesh Gunawadana made a very good intervention and uh, made a few uh, uh, comments on this issue. It was for that very purpose that uh, Honorable Vimal Veeravansa, uh, including Honorable Sambandan, the opposition leader, then uh, the Honorable <coughs> uh, Kumar Adisanayaka, the JVP uh, leader here in the House, uh, who proposed this motion. I thank all of them for having uh, expressed their outrage, expressed their disgust, expressed their disbelief. Uh, at the manner in which this monumental law and order failure took place uh, mm -hmm. the, yesterday uh, in Kandy district as well as uh, previously in the uh, Ampara town. Therefore, it is up to us today to debate how we can get over this monumental failure. Are we just simply going to uh, have a post-mortem as uh, uh, Honorable Dinesh Gunawadana talked about? No. The, what is important is for us to identify where we went wrong and then correct ourselves and see that the, uh, uh, these elements will never raise their heads again. Now, I were also, I think, uh, Honorable Dinesh Gunamadana, I think has misunderstood my uh, original statement this morning and uh, perhaps perceived that I have, uh, uh, I, I have accused uh, uh, some opposition forces uh, having a uh, hidden hand in this. No, my, my contention is that every party sometimes uh, for cheap political mileage seems to encourage certain extreme ele elements. That is not a, not a prerogative of one party. Every party uh, invariably over the years have uh, uh, unknowingly uh, have been nurturing uh, extremists by giving undue patronage to these forces. It is time for us to now put a full stop to uh, all these uh, unruly elements for whom we give uh, patronage by default, by not taking decisive action. That is what is lacking today. Decisive action by the law and order machinery to re restore law and order. Then also decisive action for law enforcement. I must, see, I must very clearly tell here, Honorable uh, Deputy Chairman of Committees, law enforcement and law and order are two different things. They are somewhat interconnected, but then what is happening today is sometimes the uh, police department, higher-ups, officials, those who inquire into it in every incident, they uh, try to soft pedal on the law enforcement in order to get the cooperation of unruly elements to restore law and order. That is what is happening. That is simply what has been happening all throughout these years. Now this mindset has to change. Law enforcement should not leave any stone unturned. They must look for the evidence, bring the evidence through the correct channels, and then convince the magistrate and have, take punitive action. The deterrence must be practiced. Why do we put somebody behind uh, bars for remand until the inquiry is over? Because they can come and interfere with the inquiry. They will bring undue pressure. Now all that pressure has to be resisted by the law and order machinery. That is not happening. We have repeatedly pointed out law enforcement should be very strict. That should not co be compromised for sake of restoring uh, law and order uh, quicker than they expect. Now it might take a few days time for the law and order to come into place. But then in order to appease these unruly elements, if you allow them scot-free from being uh, remanded or kept in remand custody for some time until the proper investigation is carried out. These things are bound to happen. This is what happened. 
during the Ampara incident as well as I am sure if we don't take proper action regarding the uh, Kandy Teldeni incidents, similar events would repeatedly occur all over the country. So therefore it's a very, very simplistic issue that we are faced with. So that has to be realized and that I have very clearly uh, uh, brought it out in this morning's uh, uh, special cabinet meeting before His Excellency the President. Of course, we have imposed uh, uh, an emergency and none of us want an emergency being imposed um, uh, in this manner. But then uh, in order to r see, at least to uh, give that solace to the affected people, that effective action is bound to be taken, that we have, we will have to tighten our laws. In fact, I must, I must insist that we should not resort to emergency regulations alone to uh, bring the culprit to book. Because by, uh, uh, as soon as we uh, uh, remove the emergency, all these people will go scot-free. So we have to use the strictest possible uh, laws available. I know we brought the hate crime as, a, uh, as an offense in the penal code then there were some objections um, because Honorable Vijay Dasa Rajabaksha at that time uh, tried to copy the same uh, PTA regulations uh, into uh, penal offence in the penal code. Therefore, there were some objections and that had to be uh, taken out. I think it's time for us to reconsider that and then introduce this, uh, uh, this offence which is now part of the ICCPR Act which we are using uh, sometimes sparingly. And there is a serious inhibition in the police department uh, against using this uh, ICCPR provisions to keep people in remand. If they can do this in, in the Jintota incidents, why not do it in the Ampara incident? You see, one, one rule for Jintota, another rule for Ampara. Who are the people who intervened in uh, trying to alter the B report and gradually uh, reduce its impact and uh, take away the power of the magistrate to keep those uh, culprits uh, in remand? So this had to be looked into. And that again, we must also say, now look at the Rajangana incident. 60 farmers for having protested regarding the water project, which of course comes under my ministry, which is quite justifiable. They, are, they have all their right to have a demonstration, whether they had political motives or otherwise. What did the police do? They kept them in remand for several days, right? If you can do that, why cannot you do that, the same, uh, take the same attitude in the Ampara incident? Um, why, why is this double standard? This is never uh, being looked into. That is why we want to highlight these issues and debate this in the House so that this will never be repeated again. And I, I, I must say the entire Muslim community is, is in virtual disbelief. They are outraged at the manner in which this monumental failure of a law and order took place. And they have targeted specifically and Muslim places of worship selectively. Uh, last night, not only in the Digana Teldeni area, it spread on to Katukostata, it went to Aladenia, it went on to uh, Kahalla, uh, and far fetched areas. You know, they were attacking uh, uh, mosques. What is the necessity for these uh, elements to engage in this? So, shouldn't we uh, uh, apprehend these culprits? And is it, is, is our intelligence services so um, um, uh, important that they are unable to identify these forces? We know these elements, we know who have been involved in it, there have been uh, enough uh, um, uh, uh, evidence available, we have, we have seen what was happening. Um, I have been talking to these police higher-ups for the last three, four days that with this funeral there is going to be a massive mayhem. Be prepared have sufficient uh, deterrent action uh, put in place. And then finally what happened? The ASP had to give orders for the uh, uh, crowd controlled uh, uh, police, the, the riot police were missing from the scene. So someone's heads had to be rolled, had to roll in this case. It same thing happened in, in, in Ampara as well. Senior police officers have to be held responsible for what happened and that uh, the proper uh, long arm of the law should not should be used in order to bring these culprits to book. And with those comments, uh, Mr. Deputy Chairman of Committees, I conclude my remarks. Thank you.